Hey man, he brought Ben Bilal. Come back at y'all with another edition of this Boomer's Logic, man. Uh, we're gonna talk about what uh about Obama and what he came out and said and reprimanding black men. And uh, I'm gonna just weigh in on the subject, give my two cents, like I always do. But if if you haven't already, man, go to the channels Boomer's Logic, like, subscribe, hit the bell for notification, tell a friend to tell a friend, man. Uh. And I'm back with that logic again. So, man, uh, y'all gotta excuse me. I keep watching this traffic so I can drive to the store. So, I seen the whole Obama thing when it when it first dropped. When it first happened, I get sent notifications for different little stuff. So, as soon as that occurred, I seen it when it happened. And uh, like first first day, first night, whatever the case may be, I just never made a video about it, I never responded to what I had seen because it was just, I, I, I mean, it, it, this this stuff can't shock me anymore. I'm, sometimes I'm just a little surprised by it. It doesn't, doesn't shock me. But anyway, if you're not hip to what Obama said, you know what I'm saying, you can go ahead and go check it out, Google it. Um, it'll come up. You can hear his little, his little spiel in regard to how he, you know, feels about black men not showing up to vote for Kamala Harris and his dressing down of black men in regard to Kamala Harris. Um, I'm going to touch on a few things he said, man, and I can't say more than, than what's already been said about the whole situation. So I'm just going to touch on some of the things that he said and just, you know, add my little two cents. So first thing he said was he, you know, first thing he did was talk about how Basically, he's disgusted with black men. Not basically, he, this is what he said. That, you know, he, he's upset with black men that they're not going out and showing up in record numbers um, to vote for Kamala Harris. Now, first point, he didn't use the black card. He used the woman card. So what he told the men was that um, you guys aren't showing up because you don't want a woman in office. Now, remember, it used to be they were using the black woman card. That got exposed so quick that they backed up off of that. Now they're trying to shame black men, and black men into voting for Kamalisa Harris by saying that, oh, you just ain't voting for her because she's a woman, trying to shame them into that. Um, Y'all know how I feel about women's positions and roles. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they should be barefoot and pregnant um, in the pan rattling some dishes. You know what I mean? In the kitchen rattling some pans. All this president female president this and that and this and that man miss me with that um once again i believe women should be uh barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen with an apron on you know making me a sandwich and that's how i feel about that you know what i mean you can't change my opinion that's my opinion you know what i mean so anyway he goes on to you know uh, number uh, again to express his his dis, his dis, his disdain or his dissatisfaction. This he he described how dissatisfied he was with uh, black men for not going out, and he kept you know kind of reiterating that, reiterating that. And he got to a point, and this is what I really want to touch on. He got to a point, man, where he said, um, on one hand, you got somebody who has a proven track record of not liking not caring about you. And he's talking about um, Trump, and I'm gonna get back to him in just a second. And on the other hand, you got a person who can, who understands the struggle, you know what I'm saying, who's been through what you've been through, all this type of stuff, you gotta watch it and just listen to what he's saying. So, first things first with Trump. Now, you're gonna have to show me something where Trump has openly said he despised black people, that he wouldn't do anything for black people, or he hasn't done anything for black people. Because I'm going to point to one situation that I personally know, Jack Jack, my partner Fast, we all know because we was locked up with a brother. Uh, his name was, um, he was from the Nation of Islam. He, his name was, um, I, his name escapes me right now, but well, I'll get back to that. And he was locked up. He had been locked up for like 25, 28 years. They locked him up in the feds when he was young for selling dope. Uh, they gave him a life sentence. But uh, Frazier, his name was Frazier. And 
Trump, before he left office of his four year term, Trump personally pardoned that man and let him out of prison. Let that man out of prison. So you're gonna, once again, you're gonna have to show me, you know what I'm saying, where this disdain lies for Trump with black people. Because if he went and he didn't, he didn't uh, uh, broadcast, he didn't get, hey, look at me, you know what I'm saying? Stroke my ego, look what I did for blacks. He never said that. He just went and pardoned the man, right? Then for him to say that Trump has disdain for black men, it's absolutely absurd. Let me tell you something. And I've told you this before, so I'm going, I, I think it's worth repeating. When Kamalisa Harris was the prosecutor in California, man, if you, if you heard it, just go ahead and plug ears. If you haven't heard this, Put your ear up to, the, to whatever you listen to me on and listen carefully. Kamalisa Harris was incarcerating so many black and Hispanic males and females in uh, uh, California during her, to, uh, her reign uh, as prosecutor down there that a federal judge had to step in and said enough is enough and released 1,000 prisoners. A thousand. A thousand. See, let, let me explain something to you. And I explained this to my brother. See, I'm, I'm, I'm a, uh, a X street dude, right? So, when I hear things like that, because I've been in prison, I've seen the injustices and things of that nature. When I hear things like that, because those are the things that mean a lot to me, that a lot is some of them brothers in there, man, who do not belong in there. And when you have somebody like her with this tyranny, just locking brothers up by the thousands, but no regard. And most of them, she was getting locked up for weed and just throwing them in there, just stuffing them in there, man, giving them a, a, a just retarded, crazy amounts of time. And the federal judge had to come and put a stop to it. But anyway, when I hear things like that, Automatically, I ain't messing with you because I'm a, I'm an ex street dude, and that's something I look at and say, "Oh, you really ain't for us," because we make up the majority that's in prison, and you doing this means you don't have our best interests at heart. You don't have the better interests of the black man, nor the black home, or the black woman. But new information. She turns around and gives the Indians, you know, the Indians, the ones with the dot on their head, because that's what she is. She gave them 278 or 268 billion dollars. They just gave it to these people, man. But then she sits right on the thing. And if you haven't seen this, go and look it up. She sits right on the thing during the interview when it was a, a, a black girl interviewing a black woman, excuse me. And she asked her, would you ever do something, you know, strictly for blacks? She tried to dodge the question, but the sister mashed the gas on her like, hey, you know, baby, you're not answering the question. And she, this is what the heifer said. The heifer said, no, I would. Why would I just do something just for black people? No, I wouldn't. This is what she said. But you're going to sit here and tell me. Uh, 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 what's that clown's name? Barack Obama that she has our best interest, when she just clearly told you, no, I'm not doing nothing for black people. And, and you, Obama, you just as bad as her. So for you to parade in front of us as if, as if you know, you some type of uh, Martin Luther King, nigga, let me tell you what you did when you was in office, nothing. Before these clowns pushed you into your second, uh, uh, your second term, you did an interview, and please, if you haven't seen the interview, Google it. My wife couldn't believe that, she, that he said this, so I had my wife Google it. She said that she was like, I cannot believe this man said that. I said, yeah, that's the end of his first term. And black people turn around and push him straight back in there because you're a bunch of dang on lemmings, man. You are, you, you, you make me sick because somebody starts blowing a few, flute and you like mice and you just follow. You just follow. The dude didn't have, uh, 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 let me tell you what he said, excuse me, before I forget. When he was sat down and interviewed, and he said, point blank, this is what he said. I'm not the uh, president for black people. 
I'm not the president of black people. I'm the president of the United States. I said, wow. Say the same thing Kamalisha Harris said. Well, I ain't doing nothing for just black people. Are you crazy? But she turns around and gives billions to her people, who are the Indians, the ones with the dots on their head. And we still sitting here listening to this nigga Obama. He already said he didn't care about you. And then for Kamalisa Harris to sit there and say that she would never pass any laws strictly towards black people, and for Obama to be pumping for her, you know what I'm saying, bumping for her, is absolutely ridiculous. Now, Obama, just before he left office, he ain't to, he's not president for black people, but he sure is the president, sure is the president for homosexuals. Because man, he went all the way to bat for them gumps. All kind of laws, special laws, uh, federal laws, you know what I'm saying? So why would I listen to him? I didn't, I, when, when he was first getting in the office, his first term, I called my wife and me and her talking about it. And I said, listen, she, I told her to ask her friends because all of them was voting for him. And I asked her, asked him why. And the only thing they could tell her was because he's black. I said, they don't know none of his politics, what he stand for, what, you know what I mean? In regard to our community, what he's going to do for us. Uh, they, oh, they just keep telling me it's because he's black. And that's it. And that's it. That's it. <laughs> he didn't have none of y'all best interests in mind. But he got up there and used his blackness to get you um, monkeys, lemmings, and mice to run to the polls and get him in. Then he tells you he, went, he ain't going to do nothing for you. And you still put him in for a second term. So for him to get up there and dance and, and sambo and two-step for this Indian woman pretending to be a sister is absolutely absurd. You know what I'm saying? And then he has the audacity to come to us uh, as a black man and reprimand us. But you want us to vote for her, but she ain't checking for us because she married to a cracker. So we shouldn't vote for a cracker we shouldn't vote for Trump, that cracker, a white man. You're going to run out and, uh, well, hell, she married to a white man. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me, man. Make it make sense, man. I, I can't understand it. So when I seen him and I, I listened to him, I, I just started processing what I had already, you know, researched and what I knew about this woman and all the stuff she had did. And I'm sitting in my head just playing it over and over, thinking about like, you standing up there talking to these people like they don't know the facts. And they probably don't, cause they, you know, a lot of us, we just so dead set on doing something, we don't care about the facts. We just wanna, you know, somebody come to you with facts, you go, oh, nah, I don't wanna hear that, I don't wanna hear that, you're, you're a Trump supporter. You ain't gotta be a Trump supporter just to be putting, uh, laying out facts for her. And that's something me and my brother go back and forth with. And I tell him, hey man, I'm a Hebrew. Y'all, society has nothing to do with me. I have a culture. I have a people that I, you know, that if something goes on that I got to pay account to. I don't have, not y'all. I'm sovereign already just because I'm an acknowledged Hebrew, I'm sovereign. So I don't have to pay an account to y'all. But I am an observer. And since I am here in the United States, I got the freedom of speech. So you can miss me with all the, oh, you ain't voting anyway, so what you think don't matter. Yeah, dude, because you'll sit and listen to it. Because you'll have a back and forth with me. If it didn't matter, you just would say, okay, that's your opinion and leave it alone. But yeah, I always tell my brother that same thing, like, you know, when I'm talking to him and uh, he doesn't want to hear facts, you know, and uh, I put, I emphasized to him, I actually seen him, um, I want to say I seen him, was it Saturday? I believe it was Saturday. I think I seen him. And me and him were having a discussion. And he kept trying to, you know, to explain to me about the economy. And this. I said, listen, that don't mean nothing to me. The economy, the bread too high, I got a choice, buy it or not buy it. It doesn't matter to me. Eggs too high, too expensive. I got a choice, buy it or don't buy it, right? So... At the end of the day, I told him what matters to me is the state of lawlessness. 
that I see running amok in the streets. And what are you gonna do about that? Because it really just started within the last four years. And I, you know, I explained to him, I'm an ex-street dude. And when I'm looking at all this lawlessness saying, hey, lock that door when you get in the house, baby. Or, hey, no, you can't go in that area. You can't do this, you can't do that. That's when you know it's bad. When a, when you, when you would, when a Negro that has been in the streets his whole entire life looks around and say, man, things are, things are bad. That's when you know things are bad. But he kept trying to sway me, talking about the economy. Like I told him, the economy means less than nothing to me. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to convince me via the economy. I'm not looking at that. That's not my concern. The lawlessness is, is what I'm concerned about. The lawlessness. These people who are running amok, just doing everything they want to do. The, you know, the defiling in the neighborhoods, running in. Uh, and I told him, I've never seen CVS's and all these places, Walgreens having to shut shut their doors because people are going in and pilfering. You know what this dude said? He sounds just like one of them. This dude gonna tell me, <laughs> oh, that's not, that's not, uh, what he, he that's not, um, that's not a serious crime. That's not a violent crime. I just looked at this dude like, boy, y'all a bunch of, I mean, y'all a bunch of just, I just looked at this man that was just shook my head. But anyway, man, um, as far as Obama goes, man, you know, I think he needs to, you know, I, I think he really, re, really needs to reassess because what he did, you know, coming to black men like that, you gotta understand, black men feel a certain type of way. And it ain't that just, that she they feel a certain type of way about her. It's that they feel a certain type of way just in general after years of, of voting for these people, putting them in office, nothing changes for us. Um, and our lot in life just continues to either stay the same or plumb. And they're tired of it, man. You know what I'm saying? There's more information readily available where they can do their own research they don't have to sit and listen to Ricky Smiley or, or Char Charlemagne the God to tell them. They can research it on their own, Google it, look at it, and they can make their own call, you know, from that perspective. So when he gets on that thing and he just belittles black men for not doing what they're told, because that's basically what he did. We ain't, because you ain't got out and you, you ain't did what we told you to do. A lot of black men are offended by that. I'm not offended by it because I know how they see us because we've been like this for, for years and generations. And the last thing I'm gonna leave you with is we have no leadership. This is why he's able to get up there and make uh, uh, comments like that, to do, uh, to have platforms like that and say these things because we don't have any leadership. We're so divided amongst ourselves. Um, we don't have one voice. And I asked my wife last night in the 60s, who was our leader? And she said, Malcolm X. I said, not, I mean, uh, Martin Luther King. I said, yeah, not just him. You had Malcolm X as well. You know what I'm saying? Even though they were on both sides, different sides of the spectrum, they were our un unrefuted leaders. They led us. Anything that was going on in the community, they came, listened, and that's what they went and reported, you know, to the people. Like, they didn't try to twist it and pervert it for their own uh, uh, betterment. They weren't doing no Al Sharpton or Jesse Jackson's. They were actually our leaders. Let me give you an example of something before I let y'all go. When Obama was getting in the office, I, it was a Hispanic woman. I can't remember her name. She was a she's a uh, actress. And when Obama was getting in the office, her it was a dude. I, I want to say he was some type of. Um, I can't remember her name, man. You're gonna have to Google it and check it out. But she was Hispanic, and. It was a man, I believe he's in politics. He's a Spanish dude, too. He's an Hispanic dude, too. And they went to Obama. They had raised like $6 million from, you know, from their people. And they went to Obama. Hey, look, we're going to donate this to your, uh, to your campaign. And here's our list of demands. If you want us to vote for you, you want these people to vote for you, here's a list of demands. Are you going to meet them? He said, yeah. And that's how he got the Hispanic vote. Without that, guess what? Their leadership would have told them, nah, we ain't doing it. But see, we don't have that same set of leaders. You know what I'm saying? You got Charlemagne the God talking about he speak for black people. You got Steve, uh, Steve Harvey. You got 
uh, Stephen A. Smith, you got all these clown bootlickers saying they speak for black America, saying they speak for black men, and they don't. But we don't have a certified leader amongst us like the Malcolms and the Martins. We don't have that anymore. We don't have that period. So it's easy to come in and sit and, and reprimand black men and tell them to their face that they need to go out and do this and do that without fact checking, without knowing, you know what I'm saying? Without saying, hey, these are our list of demands. If you don't, you know, do what we ask you to do, you know, take care of some of these things, we ain't voting for you as a whole. And you need the black vote in order to get in. Until we get unified like that and put a head a, a true leader as our spokesperson they're gonna keep coming at us like that because they're gonna keep looking at us like we dumb we stupid we ignorant we divided and the truth is we are at the end of the day we are so whether you like it or not obama said what he said because they look at us like we a bunch we a bunch of dumb niggas hyenas running amok killing each other and you can come up with any reason you want to why we do why we do what we do but we're divided they want to keep it that way and it makes it easier for them to come in and say this type of stuff to us do the type of stuff they want to do to us but anyway man i don't agree at all with uh obama <laughs> I, don't, I don't agree with him at all i thought that was the stupidest thing in the world when i said that and watched it. i said did this nigga just come and tell black men that they suckers, basically what he says, you suckers and you weak because you won't vote for a woman. The only reason you won't vote for her because she's a woman. Well, he should have been talking to me because I'd have told him, yeah. That's exactly why I would vote for her. I'd have told him, yeah. And you can't shame me into voting for her. She need to be in somebody's kitchen. You know, be she married to a white boy going in there and making some bland food, food like he likes it and sit on down. Anyway... I talk about this subject though, man. I'm done with it. Jackie had me go on this rant. Love you, man. Enjoy yourself up there in that water, man. Uh, as always, man, Hebron Ben Malai, come back at you on another edition. If you haven't already, tell a friend to tell a friend. And man, I'm out.